Lloyd Cole's seventh and latest album is called Love Story, and it's his best since Rattlesnakes, his debut in 1984, which incidentally was voted as number 22 in the 100 greatest albums of all time in a huge survey that was done in Britain in the end of the 1980s. Stylistically and emotionally, Love Story actually seems like the follow-up to Rattlesnakes. So what we're talking about here is classic pop song craft, soaring melodies, straightforward production with semi-acoustic backup, and of course the clever and perceptive lyrics that he's been writing for well over a decade. It's not a bad combination, really. Okay, Lloyd, the new album, um, a quintessential Lloyd Cole <laughs> album, what does that mean? What is I think, a I think, I think from my point of view, it just means making a record where I'm not trying to sound like somebody else. I think there, 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 are, there are moments on Bad Vibes where, where it sounds like somebody trying very hard not to sound like Lloyd Cole. And did you feel it was incumbent on you to always be like somebody else? Yes, I think I felt, and I blame David Bowie. I, I, growing up in the 70s, and, and, and you know what it was like, every record he made, he sort of grew a new skin and, and seemed to, you know, pull it off. And, and I, I, I think people like him, people like Picasso, I suppose, you know, you know, you, you great artists, they seem to not want to stand still. And uh, I think I felt it, that that's what I should do. I should always try and stretch myself and find new places to work, find new ways to write. and. Uh, after you know, 10, 11 years of doing that, I think maybe some, maybe some people are a bit more like Van Morrison. <laughs> okay, well then let's make the distinction then. I mean, when you say David Bowie always putting on new skin, I mean, musically he changed radically in about the space of seven years, say, let's say from, I don't know, 73 to 80, millions of different styles, from soul to his Berlin mm -hmm. albums, right back to the sort of glam albums or whatever. But there's another side to that change. He was able to always stand outside of the David Jones character of who he really was mm -hmm. and create characters as well. So is that what you mean as well, almost? I thought that the putting yourself to the test as an artist was the important thing. And uh, I'm not sure if I was right. Um, I, think, uh, I think some people just do one or two things quite well and maybe, maybe they're as well to stay within the realm that they can work effectively. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, but I mean, like, just one last thing about that David Bowie thing. Do you not think it was very important that the image changes were as big as the music changes with David Bowie? That was as much part of his appeal. I mean, maybe not with you, if it's just music changes you're talking about. Well, when I was, when I was 12, 13 years old, obviously, it, it was very important. Um, I think if you look at somebody's career like, you know, somebody's career like, say, Morrissey, since the Smiths, Morrissey seems to have resolutely refused to try and be anything other than what you expect from Morrissey. And maybe that's too far in the other direction. So you sort of, you know, there's no real way to be happy. Um, I, think, I think if I hadn't have made some of these records which, which were and maybe artistically not as great as they could have been, then I'd still be wondering, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to make a record with an orchestra. Well, now we mentioned like, I mean, uh, like a, a Lloyd Cole album, a quintessential Lloyd Cole. If I said back to the basics, is that fair enough? It's, I mean, it's a very simple sounding record. And it is your most praised maybe in 10 years. It's certainly by the critics. So far, my wife thinks it's my best record. Yeah. Okay, well, what about the idea that Lloyd Cole is obsessed with perfection? Is that true? That's or absolute. was that ever true? No, that's never been true. Uh, it's not absolute concepts, are, 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 I think, are self-defeating. Well, then, do you think that in terms of that first album, that if you say now you want to make a Lloyd Cole album and that this new one is a Lloyd Cole album, that you'll always look upon Rattlesnakes as being the benchmark? Um, I, think, I think it is, but by accident. I don't think it's, you know... I think what's... The reason that that's true is because there are certain types of music, there are certain types of sound that I like, and there are certain types of things that I don't like. And, and they were all defining influences on, 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 on why Rattlesnake sounds the way it does. I love cellos. I love small string sections, I love acoustic guitars, I don't like guitars that sound like Oasis. I think all you can be as an artist, really, in, in, in the end of the century, is the only way you can be unique is having, is having your own set of things that maybe people have not arranged in, that, in the way that you can. Right. That yeah. you, you're not going to, you know, working in popular music, you're not going to invent a new form. Uh, but you can have some interesting juxtapositions that are uniquely your own, and I think there are certain sounds and there's a certain way of writing, which is mine, um, and an accompaniment to the singing, which, which, which was defined with Rattlesnakes, and people associate that with what a Lloyd Cole record sounds like. Okay, well now, 
the image that you've had over the last few years, I mean, you're very well known, but people would say that you might lack a density or you're a periphery character. Or it hasn't gone the same way as the first album, is probably what I'm trying to say, or the promise of the first album. Is that fair? Well, certainly, it's been a strange shape, my career. Yeah. I mean, with the first record being the one that was generally the most praised. Actually, the most praised we ever got was mainstream. Right. Uh, um, which I think was, w w was correct, because it was, it was hard work to make a record that sounded like that, that was, a, a, you know, a concept of making a record which you could call a Lloyd Cole the Commotions record that didn't sound like Rattlesnakes, that was also good. Right. Uh, um, but I think the thing that was most difficult to explain is, is, was, was the sort of Lost Weekend period, yeah. which is really when we made the most money and, and when we were most visible, but it really was the worst music we did. So it, it, it is a weird, it's a weird shape. It's a bit like Yellow Submarine or something, you know? Yeah. Right, you know, that, yeah. That, that, that probably made number one and Penny Lane only got to number two, didn't it? We didn't consider that we, were, that we could have any flaws at that time. We, we made Rattlesnakes exactly as we'd planned to make it. We wrote 11 songs, 10 of them were good. Yeah. Uh, and we just went out ahead to make easy pieces in the same way. We had a few ideas that, that we wanted to change this and that with the sound. We wanted to be a bit more electric. We wanted to be a bit more R&B. Um, but we were just completely confident that we could pull it off. <laughs> and it was not till about a year after it was finished that we looked back and go, some of, that, some of that's not very good, is it? But I mean, by the same token, is it the classical syndrome of, you know, the second album takes six months, the first album is 25 years? No, it's not. Rattlesnakes was all written in the eight months. What was good was that I had four or five years to get rid of all the rotten songs. Right, yeah. You okay. know, the sort of first album, Aztec Camera, I've yeah. read too many Kafka things recently, right, type yeah. songs. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. um, and I, I'm lucky because, you know, I was, I, was, I was just the same as any other 18-year-old at the time, far too self-obsessed. Okay, but then let's think about this in terms of a career that goes from success to success, which yours hasn't done in terms of sales of albums. Would it have been better if Rattlesnakes had been the third album and not the first album? No, absolutely not. I mean... There's all kinds of, you know, there's all kinds of hindsight you can have. Uh, but all the mistakes and all the successes, I'm quite happy with all of them. You have to fail publicly.